Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dr. K. Prem Primer Lecture Series presenting by Dr. Prem, that's me. And today lecture will focus on E. coli DNA polymerase 1 and its larger fragment, Clino fragment. Clino fragment. And this is the first enzyme, first DNA polymerase discovered. And the, this E. coli DNA polymerase is discovered by Arthur Korenberg. He is a person. Arthur Korenberg discovered the E. coli DNA polymerase 1 in 1952. And, uh, and it, is, it is the first DNA polymerase to be discovered, right? And in 1952, around that time, Arthur Korenberg discovery, discovery of uh, E. coli DNA polymerase wants to publish his observation in Journal of Biology and Chemistry. But uh, when, they, when he sent his manuscript to that journal, and the editor of the journal felt that not suitable for publication and returned. And again, Arthur Korenberg sent the same manuscript in 1957 to the same journal, Journal of Biological Chemistry, then they published it. So to, by knowing the importance of discovery, in 1959, in 1959, Arthur Korenberg was awarded with the Nobel Prize. So that's, this is a small story about uh, E. coli DNA polymerase 1, right? So we will know, we will uh, talk more about E. coli DNA polymerase in the next slide, right? So if you look into the biological function of E. coli DNA polymerase 1, it is in, involved in the three important activities in the bacteria. The first one is repair, repair of damaged DNA. It's a, repair of damaged DNA. And the second thing is that you all know that E. coli DNA replication or prokaryotic replication, you know, like uh, leading strand and lagging strand. Lagging strand produces the Okazaki fragments, which consist of a RNA primer. So removal of RNA primer from Okazaki fragment is also done by the E. coli DNA polymerase 1. In addition to these two functions, E. coli DNA polymerase also involved in the recombination, repair, and the processing of Okazaki fragments. And third one is recombination. These are the three important fun biological functions of uh, uh, E. coli DNA polymerase. So, in the next slide, we will see what are the how this. Uh, these three tasks are performed by the one enzyme, right? You will see in the next slide. So, as I told you that this enzyme is a faster discovered DNA polymerase. And also, one more specialty is that it's a most abundant DNA polymerase in E. coli. There are five DNA polymerases are present in the E. coli, out of which out of which this E. coli DNA polymerase 1 is the most abundant protein. How, many, how much? Like 400 molecules per single bacteria. Remaining all, remaining all, remaining all 1 to 2 to 5 DNA polymerases, they are, uh, they are present in the only double digit, like less than 50 molecules per a cell. So you see, Based upon the evidence, you can say that this is the most important DNA polymerase and required for the DNA uh, metabolism. And uh, this is a DNA polymerase having two important domains. One is N-terminal domain and second one is C-terminal domain. With these two domains, it is performing three distinct enzyme activities. It is performing three different uh, enzymatic activity. We'll see them by one by one. The first one is five prime to three prime polymerase activity. Five prime to three prime polymerase activity. This activity is present in the C-terminal larger domain. Right? 
right and this activity this enzyme activity is required for the elongation of dna synthesis elongation of dna synthesis from primer so it adds the nucleotides to the 3 prime oh of the primer and elongates the dna synthesis that's the first activity and the second activity is 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity is nothing but proofreading activity proofreading means what whenever the wrong nucleotide is added in the growing strand or daughter strand that nucleotide the wrong nucleotide cannot base pair or cannot form a hydrogen bond with the base in the complementary region so when a when a when a, when a uh, wrong a nucleotide which is in, which is in the growing strand cannot form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen bond with the uh, base in the complement region that is called as a wrong nucleotide so with the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity with this activity this enzyme identifies that wrong nucleotide and removes from the that, that uh, strand so that is what is called as a proofreading activity again 3 prime to prime exonuclease activity is also present in at the larger subunit of c terminal and the third activity is 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity generally when you know in the during whenever a cell exposed to the extreme conditions because of that there may be a nix in the dna nix means single strand breaks so during the repair so polymerase and you know equally dna polymerase adds the strand adds the nucleotides at the nix and the because of this activity the the nucleotide or a strand which is post nick will be removed you see removal of post nick dna strand while repair which allows the synthesis of new strand so this activity 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity present in the small subunit of small subunit that is at the n terminal region so same thing i have, have comprehended in the uh, diagram you can see that in the next diagram this is a organization of uh, you see this is what is the organization of the e coli dna polymerase 1 and it, as i told you that an n terminal in n terminal in n terminal there is a 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease act this is what is the 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease act this is at the n terminal and the rest is a c terminal right so in between you know then followed by there is a 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity and then the, there is at the dead end of uh, c terminal there is a 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity is written wrong here you see this is a 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity so you see and the this molecular of this protein is 109 kda and how many amino acids are there 928 amino acid right this is what is the enzyme and uh, enzyme molecular weight and the this is what is the uh, number of amino acids present as i told you that three activities 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity at the n terminal 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity in between the polymerase and uh, exo uh, 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity and 5 prime to 3 prime exo uh, polymerase activity at the c terminal right and uh, so when this enzyme this is subjected to the um, mild or limited proteolysis with the help of uh, substrin substrin 
then what will happen this enzyme is divided into the two subunits the n terminal small subunit and the c terminal larger subunit n terminal small subunit which is having 35 kda have only 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity when it comes to the larger fragment which is having the both 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity and 5 prime to 3 prime 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity that this is your again mistake here written 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity right then this larger fragment which is having the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity and 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity is presented present in the larger fragment so this larger fragment is called as clino fragment this larger fragment is called as clino fragment whose molecular weight is 68 kda 68 kda again i'm telling you so when uh, e coli dna polymerase is subjected to the protease digestion that's a mild or a limited proteolysis then it gives the two products smaller product smaller product subunit and larger subunit the smaller subunit is having the only 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity and whose molecular weight is 35 kda and the larger fragment is called as clino fragment which is having two activities that is proofreading activity that is nothing but 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity and 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity understood and we will see what are the applications of for dna polymerase 1 and the clino fragment molecular biology and rdna technology right yeah you can see this uh, dna polymerase 1 and the clino fragment is uh, you know they are widely used in uh, molecular biology and uh, rdna technology and the first use is they are used in the dna sequencing by didaxi method right they use in didaxi method you all know that uh, dna sequencing can be done by two methods one is a maxwell gilbert method and the chain termination that's nothing but didaxi method where it requires the enzyme right? polymerase it requires so initially when they started uh, you know the you, you discover you know uses of sequence sequencing they use the dna polymerase one e coli dna polymerase one because that's a enzyme which is a fast purified and characterized one and the, you know it is a, it is a prototype for any dna polymerase so every detail of for dna polymerase one of e coli is known right so it's a prototype for any dna polymerase right and the second important thing is this e coli dna polymerase 1 as well as the clino fragment they are used in the second strand cdna synthesis second strand cdna synthesis what is cdna conversion of rna to dna is cdna complemented dna so the that is carried out by the reverse transcriptase then followed by second strand is requires the you know any any other polymerase where uh, clino fragment or clino fragments are used and third one is a uh, probe preparation they are also used in the probe preparation random labeling where random hexamers primers are used uh, to particular template where uh, dna polymerase one or clino fragments especially clino fragments are used for random labeling of uh, probes and the fourth one is uh, used in the nick translation of pro nick, nick translation where dna polymerase 1 is because it is having 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity that is useful in the preparation of uh, probes through the nick translation method right 
So then we have uh, one more use. That's a filling of filling of uh, orangs or cutting of orangs also done by the DNA polymerase. You can see in the next slide. The next uh, use is the DNA polymerase have a ability to cut the protruding ends or filling the uh, ends. So this is all depends on the presence or absence of uh, DNTPs. You see, it removes the protruding ends in the absence of DNTPs, fill the cohesive ends in the presence of DNTPs. So you see, this is what is the DNA strand where you can see protruding ends at the treatment end. And if you provide, if you don't provide the DNTPs, the enzymes cut at the protruding ends and you get a blunt one, blunt, blunt end uh, DNA. And in case if you provide the DNTPs, right, it adds the DNTPs at the, you know, uh, uh, at the, uh, non-protruding non, uh, ends and you see there is a synthesis of uh, new nucleotides at this point. New, it will fill the uh, at uh, non-cohesive non ends, right? So it can do the removal or filling of the uh, cohesive ends. It can remove the uh, cohesive ends or it can fill the non-cohesive ends also. This is what is the these are the ex, uh, applications of uh, DNA polymerase 1 of E. coli and the genofragment. And uh, this is almost like uh, end of the, our uh, discussion. And uh, if you like it, just subscribe to my channel and for many for updates. And if you have any question, please comment in the comment section. I'll get back to you. Thank you all for listening. See you again with the one more video. Until then.